should restart right from here. Um, SEO is really important for everyone and uh, this is not just you will try to test and try to analyze the SEO and you do the changes and everything will, will, will be appear on the top of the search results. Uh, but you have to consistently take care of the improvements and search on the, any type of the information which could uh, impact and improve your SEO for your website. And basically today we are going to talk about tools, about ways and about some steps you could just apply just right now to your website. Either you are a developer or you are a manager or you are just a person who is involved in uh, um, coordination of the quality assurance or even if you are doing some audits when you start new projects, this is basically the best start for you to go over the some of the checks which we, we could do for your website. So today we are going to concentrate on the overall um, understanding of what is basically that search engine indexing and how it's supposed to work uh, in in baby steps basically and then uh, we will go over our checklist for the SEO metadata which will include some of the uh, social media metadata uh, we also going in high level look into a few tools which could help you to analyze your site and at the end we are going to go through the questions so um, First of all, um, each of us is asking what, what is basically the search indexing. This is when um, we have some content on our website, on our web property, and uh, basically that moment when the crawler is trying to aggregate the data from your website and trying to pass it to the search engines, and search en engines and basically analyzing the data and providing the uh, people who are searching across the web, the relative results based on their keywords. So um, Google and the other search engines are, are using specific spiders to crawl the websites. Uh, there are plenty of plenty of robots, uh, spiders, uh, crawlers. They are specific to the search um, engines and basically have different different names. Uh, I would say that just if you're curious about what is your presence right in the search indexing you just type in, in the google search site two dots and then the domain name of your website and you will see how many pages of your website are right now indexed and what are the uh, metadata which are reflected there the metadata which is actually shown um, you see it in the left corner the actual url of the website uh, the title, the description, some additional metadata. This is uh, called SERP. Uh, in SERP abbreviation is used for by SEO you know, people, and they say about that that it's basically results a results snippet, right? The result SERP can be standard, like you see on the screen. Uh, it could be organic. Uh, the presented in here are organic results. It could be paid SERP. And there could be multiple, multiple variations of SERP when we have some specific rich snippets. So basically when they are for specific content, for specific types. And we will talk about that a little bit later. So um, those SERPs uh, are basically the search engine's responses to the user's search query, which is uh, ordered by ranking puts the most relevant uh, to result on top of the screen. And you could imagine that uh, basically top SERPs in the result page are the top winners because no one will, will go to the next page of the search result. They basically your goal of um, either you are the owner of the, of the website or of the business or of the brand. The main goal of every client we have is basically to bring the website after the launch or through the maintenance, or through the improvement, uh, through after the migration, or any other state of the, of the project, right? To bring the, res, uh, the search snippet on top of the search results. So this is just the basic information, and right now we are going to um, kind of in high level 
go through the checklist, which uh, will help you quickly uh, analyze the website and uh, figure out if it's uh, if it could be optimized or not, or if there is any improvement you could apply or not. So, as you know, SEO is really important. SEO is really important for um, um, traffic source and it's uh, organic SEO could potentially bring you more value than even paid ads. So this is a critical topic to, to focus. Um, again, metadata is about the data and uh, if your content, your website's content will be, will be find in response of search engines um, requests, it's uh, metadata will help to um, bring it on their top levels. So let's see in um, kind of in high level checklist of what you have to check when you are starting to audit your website. So first of all it's a uh, main meta metadata you have to concentrate. It's title and descriptions. So before, uh, like five years back, we also uh, needed to take care about the keywords. But right now, keywords are not um, relevant anymore. So uh, basically, Google and the rest of the search engines are looking into the titles and descriptions. They are right now ignoring keywords. They take all of the keywords from the uh, body of the pages. So um, first of all, whenever you are trying to audit your site, just take a look and and see um, there should be no missing titles or there should be no missing descriptions right on each page. So there are plenty of tools which uh, you, could, uh, you could you could utilize to scan your, to crawl your site and there are options and I will show you a couple of them today where you could check if there is any miss on the titles and the descriptions. There should be no duplicated titles or descriptions for different pages. So this is not allowed to have the same meta title and meta description on multiple pages. The same as uh, it's not allowed to have um, the same meta text inside the same basically duplicated meta te text inside the um, source code of one page. So no duplication for multiple pages and no duplication inside one page. Only one meta tag is allowed per uh, page. Also, there is a really important title should not be really short. They cannot be like less than um, 30 characters. And if you will audit your site and you will find out they, the titles are really short, you probably have to take a look and revise the titles. Also, they, should, uh, they cannot be too long, more than 60 characters. That means they will be cut by Google or will be ignored by Google. So preferably, from 30 to 60, the title should match that, basically. Uh, well, nah, nah. Uh, description, the same. Like, they shouldn't be more than 155 characters and less than 70 characters. Um, you could just, whenever we'll be done with the presentation, um, we will upload also presentation, so you will be able just to copy-paste and, and put it into the this checklist, into the spreadsheet, for example. And you will be able just to take a look, scan your site, and based on those action items, you will be able to audit the, the titles and descriptions and the rest of the metadata. Um, and again, title and the meta description should have relevant keywords. So you cannot have content about, for example, search engine optim optimization, but the title say, say something about recipe, right? So it's relevancy of the information should be always uh, important for the SEO and ranking of the pages. If there will be any conflict between the whatever is inside the page and basically HTML tagging and titles and descriptions, that will, will bring uh, uh, inactivation of that page in the, in the search and index and it will be basically not ranking right. So let me go to the next slide. So this is how this uh, configuration of the meta metadata looks in Drupal. We recommend to use tokens if you would like to uh, make sure that you will basically be consistent between each uh, and your headlines and, and your um, metadata. So keep eye on 
tokens and make sure you test, right? That, uh, for example, that token in particular um, uh, present on that particular content type. So there could be cases when you can specify the description. Here you can always override tokens with the actual SEO if you would like to work on the customization for specific pages, right? The configuration is done uh, per page, per content type, and on the global level. So the Drupal models allow to do the configuration of the titles globally, then based on the content types, and then basically um, override that on the node level. Second, take care about your aliases. So uh, first of all, keep in your mind that um, all of the pages should have aliases per security uh, kind of best practices we are not allowed to have uh, node IDs in the for the pages and release somewhere in the code or in the any any site map or anywhere else so take care of your uh, aliases and make sure that node IDs are not exposed second all of the aliases should be short and can be readable by human that is really important because if the human cannot read the LS, the search engine will also not be able to read and that will, concern, will be a concern for the ranking. And also keep eye on the keywords uh, relevancy and uh, make sure that keyword, keywords are rich uh, basically. So the alias ideally should match the title, should be built automatically through with the help of uh, tokens and uh, alias should be um, should be as short as possible. Also important to, to know that if your aliases have some root structure, so for example uh, here you see the pattern right in the left corner, for example slash resources, that is the root alias. And uh, that alias for, uh, for Google takes the higher ranking compared to the alias which says uh, resources and basically the site name, the page name alias. So that means that uh, top root aliases are taking higher score and indexing order is higher for root uh, pages and the lower, uh, deeper pages uh, will be having lower ranking and will be basically also scanned but will be like a, a second priority. Uh, keep eye on patterns. So that is also really important. Each content type should have its own alias pattern. I have provided here an example uh, about the, the resources. You cannot say, for example, the page which hosts all of the resources of your page uh, and call it like services. And then the next uh, sub page will be uh, resources. So you, you have to be consistent. So the root and keys of pages should follow the basically the main convention. So consistency is key for the search engines and just keep eye on the um, configurations. In Drupal, all of those patterns are controlled by content paths and you could configure per content file, content types. So you always can uh, remove or add uh, any like global rules how to, the aliases are generated by auto alias module. So you um, keep eye on that by default, globally, you will have token uh, title to be represented for all of your pages. And again, this is applies to Drupal, but the sense and basically overall requirements for the SEO will be global even if you are utilizing some other CMS. So it doesn't matter, right? Uh, is it WordPress or Drupal? Just follow the consistency, just make sure that you follow those uh, checklist rules and that will help you to bring your results on top of the search uh, uh, query and search uh, engine screen. So, uh, as you see in here, pattern, uh, we, we are stating the pattern. If it's, art, if it's content type for article, then it should be some article slash the title of the page. And there should be that navigation and there should be that consistency across all of the aliases. Third, I would like to uh, all to keep eye on the headline construction 
whenever you are starting a new website or you are uh, like audit an existing sites, headlines are crucial uh, and sometimes we were in the situation when we started new projects and we had to fully redo the front end because um, the age H1, H2, H3 um, headlines and styles were not aligned with the uh, SEO rules. So the main title should always be H1. Uh, also, uh, make sure that you determine the important and gradation hierarchy of the content, right? Whatever is main priority will be H1, whatever will be subheadlines will be H2, H3, and 4. And they will basically look uh, um, smaller and smaller and smaller. So the H1 should be unique for the HTML of the uh, page. H1 tag should be, um, could potentially be the same um, with the meta title but just make sure that it's present. So the common mistake which we have, there could be some H1, but it's not relevant or it's hidden. Uh, and the main title of the page is basically wrapped with the H2. That is really important for Google to have only one H1 for the page and basically um, whatever other blocks or subsections of the pages you wrap with the H, H, Hs depend on the focus which you are going to do for the search engines. So, uh, for site visibility, whenever you are already kind of enabled your site or you are working on the launch and plan, just make it like a checklist. You have to enable the module to enable site map XML. This is first. And second, enable robots.txt module for your website. So, site map XML, suppose, be exposed for every web property for the search engine to be able to crawl all of the pages which were represented for the um, for the indexing. So sometimes internal links or links in the site are they are not kind of crawlable or they, there is not enough cross-linking between pages. So ideally, to enable the sitemap module and just make sure you will evaluate the the, uh, the, the data which we see in the sitemap. So XML sitemap, sitemap should, should have only valid URLs. So just by enabling the model doesn't mean it's you are done, right? So you have to make sure that all of the mm, information there is relevant. All of the aliases are there. There are no nodes, there are no, no broken links, and there are no secured content. Like you don't want, uh, for example, user profiles links, right, to be exposed for the search engines. So keep. Um, when you do the SEO checks, just keep, think of it like you are making some analytic um, steps to make sure that someone who is browsing your website is, is basically not getting what is secured, but at the same moment getting as much as possible with, for the information, whatever is open. Also, one more step, it's in step number three, make sure you will submit your sitemap, XML sitemap URL to the uh, Google Search Console. Uh, that is pretty important, especially either you are going to just launch the website and you just want the site to be indexed as soon as possible, or you are updating, doing major uh, refactoring of the pages or aliases or structure of the site and you would like it like to be picked up by search engine as soon as possible. So just keep in your uh, mind that uh, sitemap XML can be submitted for Google search engine manually and you could request to force the re-indexing of the site through, the, through that exercise. Again, just to get back to the second bullet, uh, robots.txt modules, uh, robots.txt file should be enabled for every website which is going to be open for public. Robots.txt um, consists, uh, like it's itself, it's a txt file which is positioned in the, so in the directory of the site. And it potentially uh, can provide some rules about what can be scanned and whatever cannot be scanned in the site. So it's really important just not to enable the model, but make sure you will uh, review the default configuration 
and if you need to disable some of the some of the secured content, you have to do that. As well as if you launch in the site and you don't want for a week, for example, for that website to be indexed by any bots, any crawlers, you can fully close the uh, site through the robots.txt file. So you could say, do not, for any user agent who is trying to reach my site, disallow um, crawling on my website. Um, so you could Google for like, configurations, it's pretty open and uh, you could always find it on the net, but basically it's important to keep eye on that and make sure uh, if that is old site and was present before, uh, you are not um, disabling the JS and CSS files from indexing. That is really important because that means you see your website really nice looking. Uh, uh, it's like behaves some way, right? You click on something, it appears. But for Google, if you're disabling the JavaScript for Google, it just sees it like a plain HTML without any moving parts, and it's really looks like a disabled site with the minimized functionality. So um, robots.txt is really important. We had a couple situations when we by mistake launched the site, for example, and a couple days robots.txt was disallowing crawlers to browse. We quickly realized that at some point, but uh, like keep in your mind that this is really important, like to have like a checkbox, make sure robots.txt not only enabled, but also allows crawling over the website for all of the bots and all over the directories of the site. Um, five, duplication of the content. If your website will be duplicated somehow. If, for example, Google will find your dev server if you're not securing the, kind of the, the development or staging environment, Google will uh, de-index your site. That means it will put it into the back bucket and will basically downgrade the uh, ranking for, for your results. So ideally, avoid any type of the duplication of the, uh, the same content to be shared uh, across the web. And also remember that uh, if you have any type of that subdomain or any kind of ability to show the same site by, but under like other domain, just make sure you will add redirect to the main domain and it will keep consistent on, on saying like this domain is the primary one. But whatever vanity domain you have, you have to add 301 um, redirect to make sure it's basically rolls to the to the master domain. Uh, if you are not sure and you don't know probably there could be some duplicates, right? But you're not aware of those. Just look into the Google Search Console, and it usually gives you some warnings about what happens and what is wrong. So that tool is also really nice in terms of the analyzing what is going wrong and if there is any duplication happening somewhere. And this could also provide some information of where to look and what type of the information should be picked up. Six, um, redirects. This is also a really big topic. And all we know that uh, all of uh, the HTML pages are responding with specific codes. Uh, the, the most nicest code, right, which we would expect, is basically everything is OK, is 200. Uh, but whenever the site responds with any other, like page not found for the uh, 404 or 403, like access denied, or 500, that is basically means server error. So the goal of uh, the uh, to to make sure the SEO is optimized is to make sure you know the type of the responses you could receive for the pages, and you can crawl your website and you could get the basically the the responses and you could analyze the results. So rule number one, if you found any 302 code in your web responses for your pages, that means you have to fix that. So 302 errors are basically not, um, not positively impacting the SEO. So if you found any 202, uh, just make sure you will 
update and redirect it to 101. So let me show you the tool uh, which could potentially utilize just to, uh, to take a look into the website. So this tool called uh, Screaming Frog, which is used uh, by SEO people, but also sometimes I'm using it just to have a sense of overall stability of the site or like complexity of the functionality or just just to check on health for the website. So you just provide the URL in here, just start the scan and I have already finished the scan for our FFW agency domain and you basically see the results. And the tool provides the ability to, to see what is the address which we scanned and what are the, all of the sub uh, pages which was were found, the response coded codes, basically meta titles, descriptions, and plans of plenty helpful information, which uh, you could utilize to analyze, right? As we discussed, if you don't have some descriptions or you have some titles or you then don't have, and in particular this case, for example, my prerogative is just to find out, okay, do we have any 302 pages or we have 301 pages and that's okay. So if we have any broken links, uh, uh, there will be 404 pages and uh, so on. So this uh, allows me to use, for example, titles. If I need to check titles, I will just filter out, okay, show me all of the small titles. Okay, that this is the list I have to fix, right? or show me all of the missing titles, uh, no missing titles, show me all of the, for example, missing descriptions. And it shows me the pages where I potentially have to fill in the description and there is something happened and that basically also really bad for the, uh, for the metadata of the site. So basically the tool, you just provide the URL, depend on the complexity and number of pages, it scans your website like a crawler and provides you with a summarized document or you could do experts where you could find out, okay, how many HTML pages we have, how many PDF files we have on the website, how many images, and so on. And at the same moment, to analyze response codes, titles, descriptions, and the rest of the data for the SEO. Again, I'm getting back to the presentation. And another, basically, rule for the SEO is to take care of the domain uh, domain security, right? So ideally, if you will configure HTTP secure domain and will add www before the domain name, that is ideal. If you have any kind of unsecured pages, uh, you have to redirect them to secure domain. So you have to put... Um, redirect into the cPanel or HTTP access file that that for not secured uh, domain, for example, supposed to be redirected to the main domain. Here I provided you with examples. For example, there could be plans of variations how your domain could look like with and without the HTTPS, with and without www. But the main goal uh, whenever you type in your browser or someone will, bra will search for, you always should be supposed to redirect to the main domain with HTTPS and www. And this is really important for Google. Uh, if Google or any, so any other search engines could basically de-re-index de your data if you are basically having three different ways of how to reach the website. And uh, the main goal is basically consistency and for the same domain URL and, and secured uh, on, on top of the rest other subdomains. Also, um, give me a sec. also canonial tag also solves the same kind of uh, duplication issue. Make sure you will configure canonial HTML tag for your site. It should be uh, surfacing the main page with the main uh, secured basically domain and www reference. So uh, let me go to the next. Another item in your checklist when you are checking for your website is supposed to be making sure uh, you check on the broken links. This is basically every big 
project, a really big website. Um, always have an issues with the with the broken links. So if you have any broken links, that basically drops your score for the search engines. So um, I would recommend to do some systematic audits of the content. And there are plenty of plenty of tools which you could utilize to scan your site, which will give you a report about where you have the broken links. And over like 10, um, 10 minutes or even five minutes will give you the report like you have five broken links here, there, and there. Just Google for um, broken links checker, supply the domain name of your website, and you will get that information. Next will be for you to fix it, and then basically to add you a, a, like a reminder in like a couple of months in your calendar just to go over and keep eye on that um, content if you are consistently right updating content for your website. So uh, another code which are kind of uh, hard to uh, to fix uh, are usually server errors 500. Just make sure when you scan your sites. Whenever you see some kind of 500 errors, that basically brings you a big concern. If something is wrong with your website and you have to react. Usually that is uh, code or uh, developers should be involved in fixing something like that. Sometimes could be server specific, but basically if server is responded to you with 500 error, that means um, you have to react uh, even quicker than just broken link, right? So it means uh, that really impacts not only on SEO, but basically the site is not responding at all, or like half of the site is disabled or deactivated or not, not reachable. Um, bullet number eight, take care of your images. So uh, you should know it, but uh, and most of us know it, but no one is making it like an actionable uh, bullet. Whenever you have a website, every image should have alternative tag or it assign. There should be captions and titles, and the more information you provide, the more uh, uh, the more indexing data we will have for Google or for any other search engines. And that means the more we will get that um, show up in the search results. You know that when you Google for something, you see the web results, and there is also images results, right? And the more objects you have, and with the more keywords you have them for different types, the more basically ranking of your brand on your website will appear on proper uh, levels of the results. So images are also uh, important and you have to make sure you will have a separate ballot, right? Just to check if there is any images, just make sure you add alternative text and captions for those and titles. Also, file name itself is also really important. We all just upload any type of the file names with the numbers, without any helpful information, but file, physical file names are crucial for search engines. So it's a difference when you upload the PDF number uh, like 111 or 333, and you upload PDF which will say SEO rules for the web. That will be basically more uh, information for the uh, search engine to index that PDF file and represent it on top of the search results for, for particular um, keywords which will be searched. So uh, number one, nine. If and again, it depends on the on the website and depends on the client and depends on you. Uh, either you're kind of a big brand which you would like to be shared, or you're a private company you don't want to be visible in the social and uh, social media basically or um, you truly need to take care of your presence outside of just Google then you have to take care of your open graph metadata so uh, just make it like a checkbox to enable the open graph metadata for your Drupal site and make sure you will um, you will configure that and set a default parameters for it. Uh, Drupal allows uh, the tokens, again, uh, to be pre-fulfilled for all of the fields. Any other CMSs are having plenty of plugins and any, uh, like, uh, any tools which would help you to enable the open graph text. But in short, it's just a plugin or a module which you enable and it automatically will apply open graph data 
data uh, for each of the web page of your website. So, uh, first, open graph metadata should be configured on every page. Second, ensure that um, you're not only configuring open graph title and description metadata for the open graph, but you're also configuring the image. The common problem which we face all the time for all of the projects is that we basically either do not have image or there is not the right image uh, or there is no image for the open graph data. So that is crucial, not only enable the module, but make sure you have specific fields where you can upload images and through the help of the tokens, you can apply and assign that image to the open graph data. Uh, that allows whenever you share your website, that particular image to be shown in the results. Also, uh, if your website is uh, shareable and you would like it to be promoted on social media, right? Think of adding add this widget to your website. This is like a module, you could search for it, add this. Uh, it will allow automatically uh, to share your pages from, the, from your website. So uh, again, this could be not needed for all of the websites, but could be uh, important for some. And uh, if you are not sure how to look into the, uh, how the open graph data looks, uh, you could all, always use specific uh, tools to debug the metadata. Uh, open graph metadata could be debugged by, through Facebook. There is like a URL where you paste the URL and you see the response, I will show you shortly. And there is also the same way debugger for LinkedIn. So if there will be no open graph metadata, when, if someone will share your website, they will get uh, basically uh, less visibility and the data which will be shared will be shared will be not organized normally as supposed to be. So this is how the open graph uh, titles and basic open graph metadata look like. So this is basically specific uh, HTML which is which you do not write through the custom code again, you just enable the Drupal module and it becomes basically available on your uh, website and you can control the uh, the way what to configure here uh, based on the content types. This is how the debugger show, uh, for example, if something has uh, uh, open graph data and basically summarize how your link will look like if someone will share it on the Facebook. So open graph meta metadata basically controls the layout of the card which will be shown by social media in LinkedIn or in Facebook. The same story for, for the Twitter cards. Again, the, there is a set of the meta tags which are used to, to be um, configured for the uh, Twitter visibility. So if someone will share your link to your website, you could be just a URL, right, for the standard site if you will not add that metadata. Some of the um, some of the Twitter cards, uh, basically most of them are configured to be like a summary, so they have types. So they could be like a summary card with just default information. There could be some more advanced large photo summary card, and I will show you a couple right now. There could be card to show um, like YouTube video or something else, so media cards. So you just configure which content type, which type of the card you would like to have. And this is what you will have in your source code of the page. You basically will have the same type of the um, metadata built automatically by the module. And uh, uh, you could utilize debugger to take a look into the how it will look like on um, on Twitter, even without going to Twitter and sharing your URL. So you're basically able to test it by yourself by just going to the debugger, copy paste in the URL of your website, and it will get the type of if the card looks good or if there is any issues with the images or anything like that. So just by enabling it for the whole website, you're automatically basically having that feature to look nice on the Twitter and 
by controlling the types of the cards, you will be able to say to Twitter, like, show video in here, or show image in here, or show small image in here, or show large image in here. So this is an example. The previous example is uh, just a, a summary, uh, kind of just a small summary card. And the second example is the large card for the Twitter share. Again, debugger gives you visually the way uh, how it looks like. Most of the corporate clients are always enabling the Twitter cards and making sure that the image assigned appropriately to the text and they have really huge, basically, um, ways of triaging on the depend on the types of the content, right? What to, to show and what how the cards will look like after someone will share those on social social networks. So um, one more bullet you have to take care of it's schema markup. So schema markup is a really something and there was a separate session about this topic uh, before but you have to understand that it basically provides the ability to bring more richer snippet in the search results for the search engines. What does it mean for you? It will look not like just a title and description. It will look like an image or recipe or some um, ranking. It could have some video and, and some de definition. It could even have some price of the product. So basically, this is the method that data on top of the data. So it's like a micro micro meta data. So that means like if you have uh, some products which you sell on your website, just enable schema, define the types of the uh, metadata you would like to enable, like, and you can specify custom or pre default uh, fields, which could say more and more about your product. You could position there the description of the product, you could position, position there the uh, price of the product, ranking, and that all will be indexed by Google or any other search engine, and that all will be basically uh, more nicely processed and uh, showed in the search results. Again, once you know schema uh, markup, right, you could Google for schema markup Drupal module, and you could select and enable the module which support, provides that ability to expand that functionality, and we will be able to, to integrate and basically that microdata. Uh, and that, that can be done for any other CMS. So example of the rich, uh, rich uh, snippets in the search are like recipes for them. <coughs> they are not like, the, if you have the type of the granular digitalization, you could specify like duration, how, how long it takes to prepare, a, to prepare some recipe, right? specify ingredients, all of that information goes into that schema.org configuration fields and will be basically visible for search engines. Any questions so far? Yes. Would a page rank higher if it has those attributes? Yes, that's why they call it them rich snippets for sure. They will be, so the just standard snippets, they are kind of always in the results, right? But you see that recipes will be on top, images will be on top, videos will be on top. So they will be with a more uh, graphical interface. They will be with the uh, thumbnails, with uh, some nice looking text. They could be even uh, layout, could be just, not just title, link, and description. Description could be on top highlighted in some border and it could be also marked up in bold some specific words which you just looked for. So it's definitely will be like richer experience for the users and you will be higher in the ranking. So um, every SEO specialist will be able to identify what is the rich um, snippet and what is just a standard and rich, uh, rich and our goal is basically to make as much as possible rich snippets so they will be always on top they will be always nicer and, and styled by search engines in, a, in another way. So I would recommend for sure enabling that the schema and uh, the, through, through the specific standards they have, they, they have uh, basically specific fields which you could fill in and those data of the, those fields will be exposed basically more information to Google, thus they will become rich snippets. And we are almost 
close, right? Uh, like a couple more minutes and I'm, I'm going to finish. So local SEO is really important. So if you are a brand or you're, you're a company or you are like something or a business, it's really important for you to register um, information about yourself in the different social media and make sure the business name, the address, the, and there is always a backlink to, the, to, to your website. And that all should be consistent across all of the sources. So register a business on Yelp, Yahoo, on Bing, on any other sources, just and make sure you have the same brand name and the same URL, the same address, and the same information. Consistency is key for Google. The more information you get, the more ranking you get, on top of the list you are, you are going to, to appear. Also, the goal for the locals SEO to appear to appear on the map, right? Whenever someone search, to be on top. Because if you are a local business, right, you should be higher, and you will be even you will be there. But for you, in order to be there, you have to configure Google. Um, in Google, there is like my business uh, instance where you have to, kind of, to to set up again your business name, address, and URL to your to your website. That will also improve your ranking and will uh, potentially bring you upper upper in your local areas. Um, also, don't forget to list the communities or like areas you're working on. So, if you are for print, if you are located in Princeton, doesn't mean that you are not surfing surface in some other regions, right? So, SEO should be uh, pretty rich and tell a lot about different uh, kind of communities and list the data. So if you could put just a footer where you could list the cities you are covering for the business or like areas, I, you know, you're just in Princeton, right? And you have central, eastern New Jersey or something like that or middle, uh, some other information which you could, uh, could say there are like additional uh, cities you, where you have some offices or something else. That is pretty crucial for SEO. That will allow your site to basically take the first spot in that particular area and the more uh, basically cities or like uh, communities you will define in your description titles the more chances that you will be higher compared to other uh, websites or any other kind of competitors and also if you have any representatives in the other countries there is another functionality which is called xref lang tags inside your source code which uh, you definitely need to position and to say this for example site is for us but i have like uh, i don't know germany or uk instance or i have also canada so xref is something which is important to keep as a tag into for the internalization and making sure that the site will be visible even outside of US or in, in any other country. So um, again, the next couple slides just really short because we have to finish. Um, important page load speed. There are a lot of a uh, lot of tools to measure. The goal is three seconds for the for the page low, uh, for the page performance. Um, if it will be more than five seconds, that bad for your SEO. So you could start working on improvement of your uh, JavaScript and HTML and, and fixing all of the issues which which we will face. So uh, aggregation of all of the JavaScript just enable model to aggregate JavaScript. Make sure that functionality works after that and uh, basically take care of the caching so the more time you could win for the user the more people you will get the more ranking you will see uh, it will improve so res responsiveness is another direction you have to keep an eye on if your website is not mobile friendly or not friendly to the tablet devices or any other devices that means that you will be less on uh, ranking for search and uh, again, just think of it how you can put, optimize any framework just to make it uh, truly um, to support different sizes of the screen. And Google prioritized mobile first um, sites, so if it will be uh, if it will have responsive design, that means you are you are in win win for Google search indexing. And again, uh, this is uh, the last ballot of the checklist. 
uh, either you are launching the new site or you are like looking for your to improve your existing site, just go and connect to Google uh, Analytics, right? It just takes you like half hour or like even 10 minutes, it depends on the person, right? That could be like a couple days for someone, but just connect, see, okay, how many pages are indexed? How many people are coming to my site, right? What are the trends? Who are my people? Like what time are they coming? So that all of that type of the reports are provided by Google Analytics. Also add your site to, to the Google console. That will help you to see, okay, who landed to my site, from which keywords they landed to my site. And uh, you could utilize, okay, I was shown what is keywords, this amount of time, and this is how many clicks I got from that keyword. And you could see which keywords you are ranking for and could work on improving the ranking. Again, I will not be able to give you like all of the SEO knowledge, right? So the 45 minute session, but those are like 15 bullets which you could do and you will be already on top of like 10% of everyone who who is doing the SEO. The rest are not doing SEO at all right now, at least for now. So uh, again, make sure you enable some type of the analytics. Google. Analytics is free, Google Search Console is free, so you could do that, and you will be able to monitor the trends. And just to finish, tools. There are plenty of tools which could help you to do all of that I would describe automatically in one click. Just try those plugins I am showing you right now on the screen. SEO Meta in one click will just click and you will get results about what is wrong about your site. SEO check will give you like a validation for metadata which are on the current active page. Lighthouse can do performance, uh, mobile friendly monitor, uh, accept, acceptance of the accessibility and plenty of page speed check and so on and so on. So Lighthouse probably must have tool for everyone just to in one button check how your site behaves for mobile and desktop. And do and get the reports about what is broken and what is what is the score for your site. Then the redirect pass will help you to see okay what type of redirect happened. If it is it right redirect or not right redirect? Then uh, plenty of plenty of other um, browser plugins which could help you to emulate open of your website as on a mobile device. For example, user agent switcher will open your device on mobile. Uh, but on desktop, but will be basically showing you the same size width as will be on the mobile. And tools. This is more bigger tools which just can browse and scan all of your website deeper. So I showed you SEO screen, SEO screen, Screaming Frog Crawler. That is pretty nice. I would recommend it for everyone. It also solves plenty of, of uh, scans and will get you as much information about the SEO and issues you could face. Integrity could give you a really nice idea about what links are broken, what are the error code responses you have all of your pages, and if there is anything like happening which is not visible. But it will basically the, those type of the crawlers will just through so one URL will scan. Or, or through the page, all of the links inside inside the page, and will go around all of the site and will give you like really space view of your particular site. And uh, the Facebook and Twitter card validation validators just will help you to see metadata for the social sh sharing met meta tags, and also some additional tools to measure some speed. Again, knowing that you have to take care of the speed. You just Google for uh, what tools can I use, and you will get it. Again, Lighthouse will be crucial browser extension, which will have you, have you help you to automate it and do it quickly. Basically, that's all. Um, just copy the checklist, or just grab the presentation, and you will be able to have that checklist of what you can do to improve your site, and you will find a lot of kind of nice work spots which could help you to, to bring your upper in the search results. Any questions? Yes. Do you advocate actually putting in 
meta descriptions because I know in a lot of our websites we rely on Google to pick up the metadata itself. Is that bad? Uh, what do you mean by uh, like, like we don't type in a description for the page and a title for the page. We we allow Google to pick up the H1 for That's the title of the page and the first. That's fine. So the search snippets uh, most of the time could reflect the description you provided. But if you are not providing the description, it automatically will take it from the body of your page, depend on the uh, basic relevancy to the keywords which someone is searched for. So that's fine to keep it empty. In, in, in any case, Google is pretty smart. Even if it's empty, it will try to utilize the best part from your page basically to show to the client in the search snippet result. So that is not a problem and it will uh, it will try to, to, to identify. Even if you will do any mistakes, if there will be any corruption data in the description, Google will not show it. So it will basically utilize, okay, it's too huge, or it's not relevant, or it's empty, or it's something else, or it has some like dummy text, or it has some uh, unicoded or like characters, something like that. It will not show it to the people. It will take, rather than take body copy, and will show on the spot for the description. So it's really smart in that way. Any other questions? Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good day.